Welcome back to Take 5 Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This season is all about our industry advisory group. Comprised of the 35 distinguished professionals from various fields of expertise, OBO's industry advisory group provides valuable input on OBO's major construction projects and serves in an advisory capacity concerning industry and academia's latest concepts, methods, and ideas related to OBO's mission. For this week's episode, Branch Chief within OBO's Office of Construction Management, Tamala Simpson, is chatting with Jeremiah Watts, Principal and Co-Founder of D. Watts Construction. D. Watts Construction specializes in high-end commercial interior office build-outs, offering pre-construction, construction, and design and build assist services. As principal and co-founder, Jeremiah is responsible for providing project and executive oversight while managing day-to-day operations, guiding projects from discovery and design through development, implementation, and closeout. His portfolio includes leading national clients such as AOL, BAE, Deloitte, Google, and Hilton. Mr. Watts is a lead accredited professional and was named as one of engineering news record Mid-Atlantic top 20 under 40 in 2014. Tamala Simpson currently serves as OBO's Office of Construction Management Africa Branch Chief and has served as project director and construction manager for several of our overseas projects. Before joining OBO in 2005, Ms. Simpson worked as a project manager for the Tremel Crow Company in Merrill Lynch in New York, New York. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies and a Master of Architecture from the University of Kansas School of Architecture and Urban Design. She served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Volgograd and Saratov, Russia from 1995 to 1997. We're very excited to have them both with us today. Welcome. Good afternoon, Jeremiah. Thank you for joining Take 5 Friday. Um, I'm glad you're here, and I'm hoping to ask you a few questions today. Awesome. Good afternoon, Tamla. It's it's a pleasure to be here today. Great. Well, why don't we just get started? Um, What drew you to the field of construction? Uh, Sure. And then as I jump in, I guess just a little bit about myself. Uh, Jeremiah Watts, uh, originally born and raised in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, And then upon graduation from Brown University, I decided to join one of the larger general contractors in the the region. Uh, I spent 12 years there before um, uh, deciding to kind of jump off the cliff and and start our own firm. So I'm a co-founder at D. Watts Construction. um, And uh, and we focus in on on high-end commercial uh, interiors, so offices, amenity spaces, uh, lobby renovations, fitness centers, et cetera. That's kind of our bread and butter within this region. And so, you know, coming back to the original question, what drew me to uh, construction to begin with? Uh, it was actually a little bit uh, by chance. Um, I had a mentor uh, as I was um, winding down my, uh, my journey in college at Brown and he introduced me. He happened to be in real estate, commercial real estate. Uh, a longtime broker in the Washington, D.C. region, and he connected me to uh, what ultimately became uh, my, my career path and, and, and company. And, and, and so it just kind of, it, it happened through a connection. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of the importance, you know, especially with our next generation uh, to, to kind of show them the opportunities that are out there. And, and you know, any, any successful story normally starts with kind of a vision and an opportunity. And and, and I think my, my journey is kind of case in point. And at this point, you know, I'm 20 years in uh, of that career uh, and, and, and helping to uh, lead and run a, a company of my own. Great, well, we're certainly glad that you took that plunge and um, created your own company. Um, as you know, today we we're speaking with people that are on our industry advisory group. And we wanna thank you for being a member of our, our group. Um, what part of OBO's IAG mission most interested you and informed your decision to join? Sure. Um, You know, I think it actually ties back to one of my own uh, or our own personal visions when we set out uh, to start what we're doing here at at D. Watts. And one of the things, you know, I kind of, I got, I was blessed to, to, to spend time at, like I mentioned earlier, at a larger uh, organization, kind of a big company. Uh, but one of the things we tried to do at our firm was not necessarily kind of recreate what others had been doing in the industry, 
but really kind of challenge the status quo a bit um, and to kind of, you know, see if we see if there were just different ways to look at, uh, you know, look at the situation and, and challenge what we were doing to, to deliver at a higher level uh, for our clients. And one of the things that I was attracted to, to, to kind of uh, what OBO is doing here is I think that that same kind of commitment to, to challenge the status quo a little bit and, and to seek and to, to try to surround themselves with the best talent and, and brightest minds to see if there are better ways to, to you know, or more efficient ways, uh, you know, uh, more environmentally friendly, friendly ways to kind of deliver what they're doing uh, around the world. And, and so that in itself really attracted me to, to just, you know, not only want to just try to contribute what we could um, and, and provide a voice, um, but also, frankly, uh, to, to try to learn and, and, and kind of absorb some of what uh, what they are doing uh, out there. So I was really looking forward to just being part of uh, part of uh, what, what they've got going on. Great. Well, we're, once again, we're glad that you're a part of the IAG. Um, looking back on the people that most impacted your career and growth and construction management, I know you already mentioned um, your former professor. What method did you take to enrich your experience and help you reach this level of leadership um, in your in your field and at your company? Sure. So, you know, I think uh, uh, coming up in the industry, um, one of the things I've tried to do um, was really observe, I think, managers and mentors around me, especially those that have been successful uh, along the way. Um, I've been blessed and, to, to, and fortunate to work with several managers in my career. Um, and, you know, one of the lessons I took away from that, though, that you know, each of them had their own personality quirks or different backgrounds. And, 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 I, and I realized early on that it's, it's okay to be your unique self and bring, bring your unique self to the, to the table and, um, and to combine that with, with, you know, just the things that you learn. But, um, you know, so, so I've tried to kind of take some of the best of uh, what I've seen through the years from managers. Uh, but you know, I've also found, which has helped my own personal journey, is is uh, I found that you learn a lot through trying to teach and mentor others uh, along the way. You know, uh, so so I've kind of embraced through my career the opportunity to whether it's mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, or larger group uh, classes and teaching along the way. I found that in preparation for those mentoring or teaching sessions and and the actual act of teaching. You, you're reminded and, and you learn just as much. So, you know, I think between emulating and, and, and really trying to, trying to do what I've seen successful and also being open-minded to teaching along the way has certainly contributed, contributed to, to my own personal success as I've gone. Thank you. Um, you've touched on this last question a little bit, but I'll go ahead and ask it. Um, in your career, which aspects have you intrigued you the most and kept you practicing construction management? Sure. Um, I, I think uh, one of the, one of the things that I love about construction and, and what we do is the fact that uh, you know what we set out to do it, it, and deliver ultimately it's something tangible, something that we can feel, that we can see, that we can walk through when it's said and done, uh, and and that and that's pretty neat. Uh, you know, in, in terms of what we do, you know, there's a lot of stress that goes along with it to kind of work through the the challenges and obstacles to get to that finish line but there it's this there's not a lot of things as rewarding as far as i see than you know kind of sitting at the table at the end of a successful project you know with your partners uh with those end users and 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 seeing a success i i think the other part that's really uh, that i love about our industry i think uh just the the, the people and the relationships the authentic relationships that come uh, from really working through uh, challenging projects and obstacles and, and, and working together, collaborating uh, through them to kind of get to the, that finish line. Uh, and, and so the relationship piece is something that, uh, that, that I've really, really enjoyed. And, and again, our focus here in the DC region, Washington DC region, where we're just surrounded by some of the brightest uh, kind of, you know, brightest companies, brightest people, uh, and, and it's been, it's just been really rewarding. Great. Wow. I, I definitely agree with you about leaving something tangible behind and having a great team to work with. Um, I want to thank you for coming on Take 5 Friday today and answering all my questions and spending time with, with me and, and the broader OBO. We appreciate, uh, once again, your 
involvement in the IAG and hope you'll continue to work with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tamla. It's been a pleasure. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Take 5 Friday. We hope you'll join us again next week. See you then.